I told you. Yeah, I want to be there tomorrow. Feet on the floor. Yeah, front row. Yeah, it's going to be great. What? My application to the science team was denied. Why? What did I do? You, you can't prove that was... No, I won't come in for questioning. Love you. Bye. Oh, hello, and welcome to Office Hours, the live component of the, of the facility where good old Professor Kyle opens up his blast doors, as you just saw, and allows all of the lovely facility staff members and nerds who are just wandering around on the outside of what's not Atlantis to come in and ask good old Professor Kyle any nerdy questions you may want, things you're wondering about in pop culture, in science, etc., etc., as we go through a number of topics uh, that have interested me, had, have made me say uh, hey ho wow over the course of the week, and we discuss it all in as nerdy a way as possible. Of course, if you want to join the facility, if you want to drape a silky white lab coat over your shoulders and continue on this conversation even after this, you can go to patreon.com slash kylehill as my security team is putting in the chat. And speaking of security team, one is a buff guy and one is in fine shape, but wears a bucket and has a wrench and they're not afraid to use it. So be cool there in the chat. And also, if you really, really want me to see your message in the YouTube chat, you can use YouTube Super Chat I cannot get to everything because we have hundreds and hundreds of people in here, sometimes thousands, but I'll do my very best. A good example of this would be a hundred dollar donation from one of my biggest supporters, Elizabeth Calvert, who says, Hey Kyle, extra simp since I missed last week. Uh, this is my tiny human's question of the week. Why can nothing go faster than the speed of light? It's his birthday tomorrow and we can't have friends over due to COVID, which wraps right into our first topic, actually. Can you give a birthday shout out to Alex? He is seven tomorrow and it means a lot to him. Alex, have a wonderful birthday. You seem like you have wonderful parents. I wish you all the happiness and joy in the world that can be found in complete isolation. Happy birthday, dude. Or dudette. Happy birthday, Alex. From me. Um, but you are wondering about why can nothing travel faster than the speed of light? Well, Unfortunately, Alex, this part gets a little bit complicated, and I don't know how much you know as a seven-year-old because I don't talk to children, but uh, you may know that weird things happen when you travel close to the speed of light. Two weird things happen, in fact. Um, one is which, uh, when you go really, 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 really fast, if you were to look at your watch, as I'm doing now, you wouldn't notice anything different. But... If someone was watching you go really, really, really fast and they looked at your watch, it would be ticking more slowly. That's right, when you go really, really fast, you slow down in time. Not only do you slow down in time, but as you go really, really, really fast, you also contract in space. So to an outside observer, not only do you slow down, but you also squeeze. Now, because of the math here, it bears out that if you go, if you went at the speed of light, your clock would slow down so much, your time, your experienced time would be zero, and your uh, spatial dimension, what you would be, would be so smushed, you'd be nothing. You wouldn't even exist in space-time anymore. So this doesn't make any sense. It's, it's, a, it's a state that cannot exist if you are something with mass, such as you and myself, Alex. So if you have mass, you can't go the speed of light because going at or faster than the speed of light is like saying that something's, you know, darker than black or darker than the absence of light, darker than dark. It doesn't really make sense. So you can't go faster than the speed of light because if you were able to, you wouldn't really exist in time and space. You'd be able to break causality. You need infinite energy. There's a lot of good reasons. The universe doesn't really want you to go faster than the speed of light. And, and we do have a lot of donations here and that's fine because this week uh, I don't, all the topics I want to get to this week are a little short, so that's totally fine. Hillian Shade with the 10 says, Show the love, Kyle. Hey. Blah. Hi, do you think it'd be cool to put every human into a spaceship and orbit them around our solar system at ne near light speed to let the Earth's atmosphere recover if tech allowed? This is actually, that's a plot point in the first Ender's Game book where to keep one of their amazing strategists or pilots alive, um, they put him in a spaceship and fly him around near light speed to age him more slowly so he can exist for longer, which I think is uh, such a cool sci-fi idea, and it totally makes sense if you can get close to the speed of light somehow. Um, but to do that with every human, we have trouble getting five humans into space at a time, so it's not really feasible right now. Mr. Diglett, as always, coming in with the 20. Uh, Mr. Diglett used... Oh, no, 
no uh, no message attached. Mr. Diglett must have used Dig, which is very effective against psychic types. Thomas Hadrick is always with the 20, says, Simp, science is my passion. Ooh, I like that. Hey, Kevin, uh, number 542, don't forget the plaque. You heard Thomas. If you were in a pressurized suit in a Vanta Black vacuum chamber, would you only see light in the direction between the light and your retina? In the direction directly between... Uh, if you were in, an, let, let's put it this way. If you were in an infinitely large chamber, would you see any light if no light was in there at all? No. I mean, your body is emitting photons. It's emitting infrared radiation because anything with the temperature emits infrared radiation. Um, but you won't be able to see it. So no, I think it'd be uh, the biggest of voids, as they say. And with that, <laughs> with all those examples of wonderful... <laughs> <laughs> facility members. Let's go to the first topic. Particle accelerators. They are literally... A lot of people confused in the chat. I don't care. Particle accelerators. They are literally the most complicated machines on Earth. They're not the most complicated objects on Earth. That's arguably our brains, which might be... Or human brains, sorry which might be the most complicated structures in the universe if only life that's intelligent be we in the universe. But particle accelerators are incredibly complicated. And one of the ways that they need to work is because they need so much magnetism to, or magnet, they need very, very strong magnetic fields to corral uh, particles and plasmas and fling them around so close, you get taught, you talk about going the speed of light. These particle accelerators are so advanced and so complicated, they can get protons and other particles moving within three meters per second of the speed of light. Now think about how powerful that is for a second. The speed of light, say it with me class, is 300,000 kilometers per second, which means it's 300 million meters per second which means if they're off by just three meters per second, they are only, they are within one one hundred millionth, yes, of the speed of light. So that alone should also help answer Tiny Human's question, Alex, from before. I mean, we can get particles so darn close. We can get it that close, but no closer. It's because physics kind of says, meh because it would take infinite amount of energy. Anyway, so these machines are incredibly strong and they need incredibly strong magnets. Now, I say in the thumbnail and in the title of this video that the pandemic has helped in some way particle accelerators. I want to see if you know why. Take a second, take a second. I want, I want to guess how. How could these two worlds collide, as the Deftones would say? Red Lord Shot says, why is Kyle? Dude, I don't know. I didn't choose to exist. I just exist and be dope. It's not my fault. Oh, okay, so I see my first, it's not a complete accident, I see my first correct answer from Deramo10, who says helium prices. That is true. So, <laughs> people saying, how should I know? Well, I, I'm asking, we're live streaming. This is a, 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 a cooperative medium. Anyway, so, <laughs> only one person with the right answer. That's interesting. Okay, so that, that's fine. So I guess it's not a very known thing that to power these incredibly strong magnets, Hatron says Kyle is hot. Who asked you? Anyway, thank you. Uh, particle accelerators need incredibly strong magnets. To power those magnets, it would be very inefficient if you, if you had giant electromagnets that were running so much power through them to fling these protons near the speed of light that it would create immense amounts of heat and it'd be inefficient, blah, 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 blah. So particle accelerators use 
liquid helium. So helium compressed and cooled down so it's just a few degrees above absolute zero, like five to 10 degrees above absolute zero. What liquid helium does in the presence of some materials, it cools those materials down so much so that electricity can flow through them without any electrical resistance. Electrical resistance, of course, is what generates heat in something like a transistor or your circuits or what have you. So these particle accelerators use superconducting magnets, superconductivity is what we just mentioned, superconducting magnets in these arrays and arrangements cooled by liquid helium. Now liquid, now helium is a, even though it's one of the most abundant, abundant elements in the universe, apparently it's pretty hard to make on Earth. Well, make and store on Earth. So who produces the world's HE? Well, most of it in the United States, the other majority of it in Qatar, or Qatar, depending on how you want to say it. Um, but now let's look at the main uses. MRI scanners, uh, MRI machines also use superconducting magnets cooled by liquid helium. Welding uses helium. Laboratories uh, for you know, cooling samples, working on superconductors, that kind of thing. Balloons. Up to 10% of the world's helium is used by party balloons. And what, if anything, has the pandemic prevented from happening. Parties and birthday parties. I'm quoting from an article on Physics Today says, as demand for party balloons, which account for 10% of more or of the total helium use, um, it disappeared in March. And as industrial demand slowed in concert with shelter in place orders, the global helium supply crunch of the past two years abruptly ended. Quote, it was like somebody flipped a switch. It went from a shortage to an ample supply within a month. And the, and the supply now is between ample and plentiful. So a weird, and be, I, I wanted to bring this up because, as we'll get to, I talk about on the show a lot of uh, bad knock-on effects of the pandemic, but this is an interesting positive one. That because people aren't buying as many birthday party balloons, we can get more science done in particle accelerators and MRIs and all these things. It's a weird, uh, you know, the a global civilization is so intertwined and entangled, it's hard to see these silver linings sometimes, but this is indeed one of them. And it looks like a lot of uh, y'all didn't know that uh, superconducting magnets needed something like liquid helium, but this is why. And now, because you're sheltering in place, and not having a birthday party, I know it can be hard, Alex. But we're all doing it. We got it. We got to do it together. Now we can fling more protons close to the speed of light. How cool is that? <laughs> Don't worry, I'll answer it for you. A very. That, that, yep. Alan T with the Australian $25 says, Hi, Kyle. I hope you and Aria are well and happy. Uh. I started off um, 2021 with some uh, with some new resolutions. I haven't really been following one of them, but I did uh, get a personal trainer, which I've been wanting to do for a long time. So, your boy's on a diet and fitness plan, and eh, we'll see what happens. I'm feeling okay. I feel I'm eating more salad than I've than I've eaten in like five years. Ixion Faust says, oh, that's scary. This is a very po paradoxical flip side to a lack of, let's say, 99 balloons that aren't floating in the summer sky. You almost made me say the title of the song, and then I would have lost all my money. Levi Rivers says, Kyle, would it be possible that time, as we know it, could operate within a three-dimensional framework below the speed of light, at the speed of light, faster than the speed of light, and warp speeds? Um, there's no indication that time operates differently according to the speed of light because the speed of light in all reference frames in every three in every dimension in every spatial dimension uh, the speed of light is constant that is the central tenant of uh, special relativity so to answer your question fully no not as we know it
Uh, DK Pitmain says, this is a repaint, but is the fastest man man-made object really a manhole cover? So this was an experiment. The fastest, what's thought to be the fastest uh, man-made object, uh, or human-made object, rather. It's 2021. Um, where they put a nuclear bomb at the bottom of, let's just call it a well, that they drilled in the desert. And on top of that nuclear bomb, like 500 feet down, I believe it was, they put a plug of co a concrete, and then they put a manhole cover up at the very top. And I don't remember, I think it was just an underground ex nuclear blast experiment. I don't think they're wondering what would happen um, to the manhole cover, but... Regardless, when the nuclear bomb exploded, it acted like a potato gun in that it created a, in, you know, it vaporized meters and meters of rock and dirt instantly created a huge pressure of gas. And that, uh, that, that, that potato gun, this manhole so fast that in like the single frame they caught the manhole at, it was traveling like more than escape velocity. So like theoretically, it, it, it was going so fast, it could have just left the planet. Um, what's much more likely is that it got vaporized by by the atmosphere and stuff. But uh, I think that's that's one of the candidates, if not the candidate. We have Devin Carr with the five says, Kyle, I love the show. Thank you for your contribution to the science community. Yeah, I'm doing what I can. Look, I mean, look, I'm in this. Look, I don't, you know, I'm in this giant area. I could be frolicking around. Frolicking about it. Thank you. <laughs> Yoshi, six, six and a half thousand, says, Hey Kyle, Simp for Science. Woo, what would happen if multiple black holes met? We actually know this. Um, they act like giant, ma giant masses and they merge. This is one of the ways they can orbit each other. They can orbit each other intensely. They can combine. And um, this is one of the sources of gravitational waves that we detected way back whenever that was. Um, two black holes merging created a gravitational disturbance so great and so vast that it traveled for billions of years before wibble wobbling some uh, vacuum tubes with a laser in it down in California. When you put it like that, it sounds pretty cool. Uh, Nate Mate with the five says, just one small simp for simp kind. Isn't that what Buzz Aldrin said? Spasmodius 3 with the 5 says, Hey Kyle, our computer-generated tesseracts are best approach to showing large objects in superposition. I have no idea. Um, a tesseract is just a fourth-dimensional object, right? It's not in superposition with something else, is it? I might be misunderstanding something. Uh, we have uh, Tam, one of my facility members with the 50, who says, You can actually have your own linear, linear particle accelerator. CERN provides... CERN? provides drawing and instructional, oh my gosh, I can't read, instructions for 3D modeling. Well, put it in, put it in the chat and let's have, let's have everyone make a little particle accelerator. Phelan TV with the 5,000 CRC, whatever that is. Kyle, love the love show. That is what I would host on, on MTV. Is there a way to simulate the moon orbit around the Earth such as I can estimate moon phases over certain areas of the world thousands of years ago? Stay safe. Let's pause the super chat so we can get on to our next topic. But um, basically, is there a modeling program somewhere where you can trace back the orbit of the moon thousands of years? I'm sure there must be one. I don't know if that would be like a, a universe simulator 2 or something like that. If you know of something that can do that... Um, put it in the chat there might just also be records of it and you know the mathematics of it so I, I would search for something like you know faces of the moon dot search dot biz and I'm, I'm sure you'll get something uh, but just search for those keywords and I'm sure you'll, you'll find something because I think it is calculable right Brent swords with the 20 says hey Kyle love the show huh Keep cranking out good content. Science has a seat at the table for the next four years. Huzzah! I think that actually brings us into our next topic. Let's see. Look at me. I have a Twitter account. Or is that me? Who knows? Um, so, I'm sorry mods. I don't want this to become contentious. But I need to bring this up because, as you know, 
I am a huge fan of social media. Uh, I think it is literally ripping apart the fabric of society. It's changing the way we interact with each other. It's changing how children grow up and their relation to each other and their social groups and the world at large. I think it hacks your brain with intentionally attention modifying devices and algorithms. I think we're literally being programmed by social media. So I think you should delete all of it is my basic opinion. But Kyle, you use social media. I know, but I use it to like say cool science stuff. I'm talking about the kind of use of social media that is potentially the most harmful. Of course, you can use social media for good purposes, but one, this technology also avails itself of very, very, very dangerous behavior. And that's what I want to talk about. Now, who could say who's behind, uh, whose Twitter account this is? But in the last week or so, um, in unprecedented moves, many social media companies have banned incredibly high, arguably the most high profile account in the world and like 70,000 other social media accounts associated with conspiracy theories, um, advocation for violence, et cetera, et cetera, things that obviously violate terms of service. Now, I don't want to get into like a free speech argument because it's very easy to see that this isn't a free speech argument. You don't have a right to use someone else's thing however you want. <laughs> That's like saying, you know, I can't be banned from the bullhorn store because I just buy bullhorns and shout fire in theaters. Because of course they can. Of course they can. <laughs> they shouldn't just like, hey, oops, this guy keeps doing that. Eh, nothing we can do. So uh, free speech obviously has its limits within a society, within a globally connected society where you can do real harm. Case in point, a new study a new study out of Zignal Labs suggested that after, in this last week of, of mass bannings of, of social media accounts associated with conspiracy theories and advocating of violence, online misinformation related to these conspiracy theories dropped 73%. So dropping from 2.5 million mentions on Twitter, for example, to under 700,000. And this was by banning just a few high profile counts and, num and, and many very small ones. I bring this up in the context of social media because like I said, there's a lot of good arguments for what social media can do for good, but we're not we're not acknowledging the context here. In a vacuum, when you say like, well, wouldn't it be great if everyone could say what they want in public to an audience that wanted to hear it? Yes. But in today's day and age, where single people can have disproportionate and catastrophic influence on millions and millions of people, perhaps we should rethink our stance. I bring this up in the context of super spreading. What social media is really, maybe it's an emergent property of it, but what it's really good at doing is super spreading. And this is the same thing that a virus does. It's having a, what do you call a, uh, a, a replication number above one, where you read, thing, you read something from one person and you're likely to spread it to more than one person. If that happens, as those other people spread it, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and out of control. It's no wonder that they call this kind of spread virality or going viral because it does literally operate like a virus. And if the past week and a half or so has shown us anything, and I've said this publicly too, it's that we need to start acknowledging that the online world is no longer siloed off from reality. In fact, the online world is changing the hearts and minds of people in reality. It's, it's when, when social media controls what you feel and what you see and chooses you to show some, chooses to show you some stuff, but not others. 
it's changing your outlook on the world. It's changing what you and I agree reality is. And for a long time, I think we've all had this feeling in the back of our minds. We're like, well, that could online stuff could never bleed over into real world stuff. But <laughs> we saw the exact opposite. And I'm so surprised that this is one of the first big things we've ever seen. But um, we have a real problem here that big technology companies really can no longer just sit back and say, you know, it's not our fault. It's just a platform. Well, it's not just a platform because you can have people showing up for conspiratorial reasons that are, are plainly nonsensical and threaten real democratic action and society. That's crazy. I mean, and it's not just America. I mean, there are innumerable examples of people in other countries. I believe this was China where some China or India where some man, uh, his, his profile or whatever went viral because people thought he was a kidnapper and then people saw him somewhere on the street and beat him to death. The virtual is now entangled with reality in a way that's kind of like entanglement where if you change something in the virtual world, something in reality will also change. And we need to get our stuff straight on this topic. It is not harmless. And uh, un unfettered, rampant libertarianism and capitalism in this sector can have real downsides. And this may be the most semi-political I've ever been, but you know, like, I just, I feel it down to my toes that social media needs to change. In a significant and substantial way. All that being said, make sure you, just, you subscribe to my OnlyFans. A floof master says the Area 51 raid is a good example. Yeah, well, that was a uh, that was of course a silly example where no one got hurt, only a few people showed up. Um, that's a silly example, but you you see that what if that what if the context of the Area 51 raid was changed? What if a conspiracy theory said instead of aliens at Area 51, it was you know some some. Uh, uh, some some prominent conspiracy theorist was quote unquote being held at some location. What if people what if armed people showed up and started asking about it? It's wild. <laughs> Caleb Baker says, mods, your drinks are on me. Yeah, I'm sorry that I that I kind of threw this at you, but I really believe that we need to have a conversation about this because we can't even have conversations anymore. You know what I mean? The only way through this is, is, is talking to each other. Master of all, uh, with the $10. Hey, Kyle. Uh, Australian $10. Hey, Kyle, what do you think about swapping from a smartphone to a basic phone to try to avoid the influence of social media? Do you think the smartphone is too entwined in modern society to do this? Yeah, I think, unfortunately, well, for example, to do a job like mine, you kind of need to be online or at least accessible. Um... But I know a couple of people who have downgraded their phones, uh, left certain social media sites, and have felt really good about it. The, the research in this area is pretty clear that social media use is linked to depression, suicidal tendencies, um, feelings of despair, like across age groups, especially like with young women. Um, I think it's, again, no one can argue that some amazing things haven't happened because of social media and connectivity, but I argue it's a net negative. Uh, Thomas with the five says, don't think we forgot Cl Thor clone project zero, 3000 neodymium magnets when the internet remembers all. I'm still working, actually me and Thea did come up with an idea to use 3000 neodymium magnets that are sitting right over there. Um, just wait. Esteban Benitez with the five says, hey Kyle, just letting you know, I located the facility, snuck in and found the invoice evil, evil plan D48A you really need to beef up your security love from Esteban 
<laughs> you didn't get you didn't get in in here that would be crazy if you got in here yeah yeah no el nombre esteban esteban i forgot his last name yes <laughs> oh they're that accurate nowadays huh <laughs> send in the strike Bienvenido. To hell! <laughs> SMP MCB with the $100 donation says Kyle, 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 Kyle. On a serious note, I'm an ER physician and have enjoyed your show since the Because Science Days. Thanks for staying sane and combating misinformation. It helps, especially seeing conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory online. Hope you're doing well. Well, I hope you are doing well. SMP, thank you for your very gen generous donation to the facility, and thank you for being on the front lines, working in the ER. I can't even imagine the stress levels, let alone the chafing on your face. I have a very sensitive face. I can't do what you do, but you can. Keep it up. Uh, let's go on to our next topic, because a lot of you got a big old problem with something that I did. Fine, let's get to it. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I'm gonna skip one thing. All right. So, usually in this portion of the broadcast, we have what I like to call um, peer review. Now, peer review is usually a time where I take your comments, questions, comments about my look and, my look and feel, and I highlight them, and I highlight a single comment, I make them an honorary member of the facility, and then Kevin gets you a plaque. He's done this every week. Um, but this week, uh, the latest video at the facility was why the classic Darth Vader style neck lift was impossible. And kind of like the old Because Science Days, this is one of the episodes that really, really pinched a nerve for a lot of you people. And I know why. <laughs> whenever I mention, whenever I do any kind of fitness or strength anything. Muscle boys and bays come out of the woodwork and they're like, you're totally wrong. You just don't, you just, you're just a little boy. So for this week, I had a lot of people saying that A, this is super possible to do and B, Darth Vader can do it because he's cybernetic and muscle metal and he uses the force. In fact, some of you put me in some kind of meme. <laughs> oh, no, you can't just lift me by the neck like this. You're breaking the laws of physics. No. <laughs> Force power. Force power goes burr. And that's even my actual hair. I can tell. So, y'all, uh, obviously you got a problem. And I got a problem with the response. Because even if it's not you, I'm going to be addressing you. So many of you very much misunderstand what this is. When I say why you can't lift people like Darth Vader, I'm saying why you, you can't lift people like Darth Vader. So it could be totally possible that Darth Vader being a augmented cybernetic cyborg person could be really heavy, really strong, and this burnt boy could use the force and help do this lift. You've seen Luke lift, uh, Yoda lift a freaking X-Wing out of a swamp. Sure, okay. Who cares? I'm saying you can't do that. Darth Vader can for some very plausible reasons. But first and foremost, you can't do that because you don't have any of that. Okay? Do you understand the difference there? I'm not saying Darth Vader can't do it. You can't. And second, I had a lot of people saying, uh, oh yeah, Kyle? <laughs> well, look at this. The bulk of Darth Vader's body is made of cybernetic implants. Any questions? 
Now, I, I don't know if he was joking there. Just because he looked like if I was a wizard. <laughs> but he was lifting 10 pounds out bent. It's not exactly a person, is it? Another humble gentleman said something similar. All right, Cal, yes, straight arm lift, virtually impossible, but physics do come in different play as well. This is a 25 pound weight, and as you were showing, straight out is almost impossible. But as you see in the Vader pick, a slight angle makes a big difference, as well as you can't see the feet, but the feet are slightly apart. I can hold this here much longer. Vader's really tall, person's really short, you can pick them up and hold them to interrogate them. First of all, I greatly appreciate the dedication of anyone who took the time out of their day to make a video and send it to me. But again, it's not about Darth Vader. Yes, I agree. If you bend your arm, use your biceps, and lift in a different way that's more over your center of mass, center of gravity, Yes, it will be easier. Maybe that's what Darth Vader does. But again, not talking about Darth Vader. I'm talking about the style of lift where a some strong bow lifts up someone directly out by their neck, arms width apart, off the ground. And despite having a very impressive 4.5 kilogram weight and a 20 pound weight, those are not people weights. Like I said, those are baby weights. And don't try that with a baby. Please. You might be like, you know what? I'm going to stop myself. <laughs> so I find a lot of problems with this, clearly. What, uh, what, uh, and I took that personally, yeah. So, what other things in this vein, because I feel like I've, I've answered myself, what other things in this vein would you like to see me do? Because this video is doing quite well for some reason. I think it's because I anger strength bros and bays. But what other kind of tropey, science-y thing would you like to see me do? I had one idea, and I think it's finally going to integrate a rock climbing sort of physics-y approach that I wanted to do and my love for Mythbusters and my connection to them where I don't want to I don't want to debunk something rather I want to show the regular average person how to hang on a ledge like a superhero there are some real biophysical like biomechanical techniques that you can change about how you hold stuff that would let you hang on to a ledge oh, more like a superhero, more than you would be able to um, normally. So I might do that. I might build my own hanging rig and get some people that you like to try it. Then I might train them. It might be fun. Uh, Devil's Night Gaming says, make magnetic boots. No, I wouldn't trust myself. I'd fall and break my neck. Thomas says, I Vader lifted a baby as its family looked on in horror. Don't do that. Uh, Big Bang 482 says, could Hulk smash? Science Nerd says, was Leia kissing Luke weird? You guys are nailing this. Silvos with a $50 donation says, my mom's a nurse and I showed her your videos regarding COVID. She wanted to thank you for trying to provide accurate information, which seems to be sadly lacking these days. Keep up the science. Silvos, thank you so much for being a professor at the facility. Thank you so much for relaying that message from your mom. Uh, I hope your mom is safe and healthy and doing the best she can and trying not to lose her mind and get totally stressed out. Um, I'm just doing my part. Your mom's, your mom's doing her part, and I will do my best to do my part which is to get good, accurate, not crazy information out there. Because there's a lot of crazy information out there. I can't understand the, vac the, the vaccine microchip. 
connection. I, I just, I, I just really can't. Uh, Jay's my name says, how do you release all eight gates of your chakra? Well, first you have to realize that chakras aren't a thing, and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. Fadi Sadi says, uh, Kyle, say hi, Arya. She's on a bunch of screens. She's a com she's a computer consciousness. Uh, Boise Freerunner says, why can't I side flip backwards? I can side flip forwards to the side in the direction of rotation to the other side against my rotational direction, but why can I not side flip while moving backward? Um, I don't know. Isn't a, don't you kind of move backwards a little bit during a backflip? I've seen a backwards moving to the side backflip uh, where someone does a backflip and then mid -air, in midair someone pushes them, which gives me a sense that's really hard to generate. Well, think about what a backflip is doing. You can't, there's no like running backflip, right? There's running front flips. And so, haha, you know, yeah, yeah, this is kind of explaining it. So when you're doing a running front flip, you already have some momentum going forward. Then what you do is you also jump to get some uh, momentum going up and in the resultant vector for all that momentum is something kind of diagonally. So you do move forward as you flip, but backflips, you never start off moving with any momentum backwards. You're always standing still, right? So when you're jumping straight up with a lot of force, a lot of momentum to get your uh, sweet gymnast body off the ground, it would take a lot of force to change that vector a little bit to make you move backwards. So because you don't have any starting initial velocity in, in that direction, it's hard to move a body in midair. It's hard to move your body at all. I think that answers it. All hail science, Thor! Uh, Ghost Game says double jumping. You could, in theory, double jump like in space if you got naked and threw your clothes. But don't quote me. Don't get naked in space. Dio uh, Brando Colate says, Hey, the the, show the hate, Heil Kyle. Ah! Why does hair grow faster on the head than anywhere else on the body? Hashtag Sim for Science. I think that's just a growth rate dependent on the hair follicles, hair follicles in, those, um, in those different tissues. I don't think it's the same tissue everywhere on your body. Therefore, different follicles, and I could just see that they have different growth rates. I don't, I don't know how, how else to explain it. You know, the hair on your head is different than the hair on your face, or, or hair on your... They're different follicles, is my assumption. But I don't know. I'm, I mean, that would be the simplest answer, but I don't know. Uh, Z1LT says, How much force does it take to rip someone in half? Why do you want to know that? A lot. Um, but not a crazy amount, because um, horses could do it. Well, you know, so back when they were quartering, drawing and quartering people, they had horses effectively rip people in half or rip their limbs off by tying ropes to them and having your arms and legs and having them run in different directions. But a lot of times the executioner would have to go in with a knife and cut some of your tendons and ligaments at your joints so it's easier to rip you apart. <laughs> That's probably too much. Alex, you're only seven years old. If you're watching, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. You got to grow up real fast in this world. <laughs> I'm a bad person. Crazy Cage with the $10 says, think of it, uh, think of it as a WWE wrestler doing the choke slam, the neck lift. The person being slammed jumps and helps the lift. The slammer also uses his pants to help grip onto. It's impossible to do it any other way. Absolutely, as I say in the video, um, I've been choke slammed by a very large man. Not like that. Um, but we had to talk beforehand about, okay, here's how we're going to do this without hurting each other. You're going to jump into it once you're at my shoulder. You're going to use your hand to press down so I can lift you up easier. It's not an in-isolation thing. Otherwise, it's impossible. Jonathan Ashcraft with the $20 says, Hey Kyle, best diet Thor. I'm working on it. I think a lot about different ways to fix the structure of society, but in over a decade, haven't come up with anything not dumb. Being a musician, I can't hide from the social media, sadly. Uh, don't put it on yourself to try to <laughs> redefine all of society. 
Um, but I think we could do ourselves a favor by acknowledging which technologies or which trends can be society warping and then try to change it in a way we think would be more beneficial. I think it's pretty clear that social media in its current form has more downsides than upsides. Major Lee Awesome, eh, with the $20, says, playing no, no Man's Sky and learn how to duplicate indium. You turn indium into chromatic metal and then fuse indium one and one chromatic metal into two indium. Is it possible to do this via fusion and using the energy to make matter? Oh, what? So you wouldn't do it with fusion. Um, what, so in a, in a way, alchemy was real, but they had, well, so hundreds of years ago, they realized once they were, once they were discovering the internal, the, the structure of elements, that they were just atoms with protons and neutrons, they theorized that if you could just add extra protons and neutrons to atoms, you could transmute those materials into different materials. You could theoretically use some nuclear process to add enough protons to lead to turn it into gold. Um, so No Man's Sky, what they're doing, I mean, who knows, but um, you could, in a nuclear process, add protons to elements and transmute it. It wouldn't be through, through fusion um, because, well, it could be through fusion, I suppose, but once you get past iron, uh, the fusion process um, takes more energy than it releases and it becomes uh, diminishing returns and then stars die. Uh, Robert Brunch with the five says, how does light slow through media and speed back up on exit? Very complicated question, Roger. Think of it, so you may know that light is both a particle and a wave. Um, and you may know that waves can constructively interfere and destructively interfere in that, uh, well, you've heard of noise canceling headphones, correct? What noise canceling headphones are doing is sending out sound waves that constructively de uh, de destructively interfere with sound waves coming at your ear. And so the net result is when those waves meet is a diminished wave. And so it cancels out some sound and so it's quieter on an airplane where all the babies are crying and that guy next to you isn't wearing a mask properly and you want to punch him right in the so if you think of light and and other matter acting like waves then you can see that if some material has a different waveform than light it could be deconstructive when it meets light right so light comes in and when it interacts with that material like noise canceling sound waves the light could be, it could form a composite wave that in that medium is slower. But once the wave got to the edge of the material and exited it, there's no longer any interference and light continues on at the speed of light. So the, the light, the speed of the photon itself isn't changing. It is the speed of this new mutant wave inside of the material that's neither the material or light itself. And then when light exits, it uh, exits, it, re it um, regains its lightiness with no interference, and it goes the speed of light. I hope that makes sense. Uh, Nicholas Breyers with a 10 says, expansion of the universe speeding up because space-time overall is flat and it's actually time speeding up over long distances? I have no idea. That's way above my pay grade. Um, it's like negative, negative pressure in the universe, the cosmological constant and all that. I don't know. Um, that's the kind of theory where you need to go to school if you really want to investigate it. The problem with these kind of theories is that when you're not an expert, you can think of a lot of things and be like, well, if that worked, it would totally make sense. I'm smarter than Einstein. But then you just go to a couple of courses in, in school. You're like, oh, I really don't actually understand this. And that's where a lot of rubber meets the road for, for internet Googling, Google foo. Um, so I'd look into it. It's moving right along. I, I said I don't have a lot of topics this time. I'm just taking a lot of your questions. Alan T with the Australian $10 says, in order to rip someone's arm out of this socket, wouldn't you have to grab them by the upper arm? I imagine pulling by the hand or wrist would separate the wrist or elbow first. I don't know. Ask the guys who had their arms ripped off by horses. See how my hair's lightly blowing in the wind? 
There's a nice cool breeze going through here at all times. Uh, Cerebus Mori says, does friction affect light? Not in the way that you mean. Light interacts with different surfaces and materials differently, and that could have something to do with the exterior structure of it, but it's not friction in that it applies. Usually when you're talking about friction, you're talking about a, 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 a force in opposition to motion, and that's not light does not experience a force in opposition to motion like that. Like, like you, at least how you're describing it. Uh, Olivia Yates with the $15 says, my dad's been a comic book illustrator since the 70s, including for DC, and we both get a kick out of the You Don't Want X Superpower series. Thanks for being wonderfully nerdy. Well, that make, that make, thank you. That's really nice. Yeah, I, I enjoy doing the You Don't Want series. Um, and people enjoy them because I think people just like me being negative of, of things. I'll, uh, I like the... Oh, here we go. We got a big boy coming in. Um, whoa, okay. Okay, here we go. Uh, so, so I'd answer your question first. Um, the problem being with that series is that I've pretty much done every basic superpower except for telekinesis, which doesn't make sense. So I've, I've pretty much done them all. If you can think of another one, look back on Because Science. I did like 10 of them. If you can find one. Zachary Warhover with the $200 donation. Oh, be still my, oh, my, oh, that's not where my heart is. Don't worry about where my heart is. Zachary with the $200, it's too much money. Spend it on groceries and toilet paper, but thank you. 200. Hey, Kyle, I was thinking about infinity the other, oh no. I got some bad news for you already. I probably won't be able to answer this. I was thinking about infinity the other day as you do. And when I was thinking about the infinite permutations that might be possible if there are alter alternate dimensions, I was wondering, what does infinite mean? I was wondering, does infinite mean that in some universes, reality somewhere, life uh, uh, finds a way to prevent heat death? So I'm, interpret I'm interpreting your question thusly. Um, so in one school of thought in quantum mechanics, according to the mathematics, there's a many worlds, so to speak, interpretation. And that is whenever a quantum system interacts with another, instead of there being one result or the other from this superposition, both results happen, but both results happen in different universes. So, because everything is a quantum system and there's uncountable numbers of, of you know, particles in the universe as we know it, there would be effectively an infinite number of branching realities where different outcomes happen. Now that, if that's true then there's infinite realities, effectively. But this isn't, I think this is where a lot of people take the wrong turn here. It's not that then anything will happen. It's that anything that is plausible, or rather, anything that is possible within the realm of physics in the universe where these are branching from, that's the boundary. So it wouldn't be like, you know, if there's infinite universes, there's one universe where I have telekinesis or I can fly. Well, those things aren't physically possible or there's one universe where ghosts exist. That's not physically possible. There's no science to back it up whatsoever. And so there wouldn't be a universe where that was an outcome. But anything that was possible in our universe as we know it, with an infinite number of permutations, then you have this... Uh, monkeys on a typewriter like situation where is there a universe where I'm president tomorrow? Yeah, I guess so. Um, so would uh, would there be a universe where life finds a way to escape the heat death of the universe? No idea. We don't even know if heat death is a thing that can be stopped, if it's a thing that will actually happen. Um, how would you stop it? Don't know. We'd have to know, for me to give you a, a good answer, we'd have to know whether or not it was possible to do that kind of thing. I don't know. Ask an astrophysicist. Ask uh, at Katie Mack. Oh, astro at, at Astro Katie on Twitter. Maybe she'll know. She just wrote a book about all that stuff. Um, Gaunt101, very supportive facility member, says, with the Australian $50, aye, get a woolly dog up ya. One of the cameramen on Mythbusters was Australian. He told me to say that. Um, seeming we can always use some good news, 
Here's one of international cooperation. A member of the Australian Antarctic Expedition had to be evacuated. The Australian, American, and Chinese expedition all worked together to get them home by Christmas. Oh, that's nice. I've often thought about visiting one of those North Pole, South Pole expedition areas. I think the solitude would be nice, but I also don't want to have to shoot a polar bear. Where was my head at just then? I don't know. <laughs> Caleb Gannon, and we just have about five or so more minutes. Caleb Gannon with the five says, I can't help but think there's some part, there's some sort of correlation between the equations P equals MV and E equals MC squared. And even if that means anything, if there is. Look at you, smart boy. Go uh, look up the actual formation of E equals MC squared. And then get back to me in the chat. Look up the full equation. The full E equals MC squared equation is not E equals MC squared, by the way. If anyone knows it, what it is in the chat, put it in the chat. Because it's not. Someone just call me Thick Thor. I'm not that thick. Well. Anyway. Emestra says, you're such a legend. No, nuh-uh, you are. Uh, Kryn says, I wouldn't mind Kyle, be, Kyle being president. I probably would, though. Seems like a lot of stress. I want... See, this... this I'm not going to say anything. I want someone who is smarter than me in political discourse, in social and, and geopolitical interactions. I want someone who's way smarter than me in those areas. They don't need to be a quantum physicist. I want someone who's much better than me at diplomacy and politics and stuff like that. And I don't, I haven't always felt that way that I was not as smart as the person trying to do that. I want to feel smarter. So I wouldn't pick me for president. I want someone who's better because I'm not I'm not even on the government's records. Could you think? I'm not, I'm not old enough to be president. They can't find me. And my, uh, my, my DARPA funding, uh, kind of, let's just say, dried up after the deaths. <laughs> oh, I forgot. There's one last thing I wanted to show you. Uh, before I end the stream. So I'll show you before I end the stream and you can you can have your reactions to that. But uh, I didn't forget. I didn't forget. Is anyone putting the actual... There we go. Nate Cabral says E squared equals M squared plus C... Uh, M squared times C to the fourth plus P squared times C squared. So as you can see, uh, I forget who said that, but momentum is a part of the E equals... Uh, of Einstein's famous equation, because it you also have to, e equals mc squared only captures the so-called rest energy of some object. If you just tr uh, transformed all of the mass in an object at rest into energy, but once that uh, object starts moving, you must incorporate the energy of motion. And as always, at the end of the show, Music Central Piano with the 5432. I like how you just randomly pick these numbers each week. You're like, you know what? What's a number that starts with five? That's weird. Who says, keep it up, Kyle. Great points on social media. Sam Harris said, quote, civilization rests on a series of, of successful conversations. Absolutely agree. In fact, civilization rests on a series of successful conversations. Making those conversations easier and less fraught can only help us out as a society. So, I know we didn't have many topics this week, but thank you so much for those of you who did join me. If you want to join the facility, continue on this conversation on Discord, on Patreon, get episodes early, get members-only live streams. Not like that. You can go to patreon.com slash kylehill and join the facility right now. Uh, what do we have coming up this week? Uh, if you haven't watched the latest episode about how people are angry that I said something about Darth Vader, please watch that back on the channel. And this week... We have a new entry into the Half-Life Histories series. So this is a new uh, essay video 
um, that is wholly original. It's not based on any previous thing that I've written. Did about 4,000 words worth of research. Should be a nice, long, somewhat disturbing essay about another nuclear disaster slash accident. I hope you enjoy it. Look for that around Friday-ish. Have a wonderful rest of your week. It might be kind of a weird week for uh, some of us in America, but we'll get through it. Especially if we have good, honest conversations with each other and we're understanding and we recognize the weaponization of, 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 of speech and inner connectivity that social media has brought us. So until next time, be nice to each other because this is all we got. And now I want you, I'm going to leave the stream up for just a minute because I want you to, to discuss this. Bye-bye.